Christos, Jesus Christos, Christos Jesus teaches Kebele, teaches Mekebel, Amen, teaches Kabbalah, Amen. Second part of the Sabbath, the Sabbath reading, the Torah portion reading from for the 33rd, the 33rd Torah portion known in the Amharic and Salasis, in Hala Salasis Orit or Torah, in the Torah of His Majesty as the Sirate, and in the Masora or the traditional, the Masoretic, Masora means tradition, in the traditional Jewish Torah as Be Chukotai. Be Chukotai. So let's deal with the, let's, uh, let's read this second part. And if you have not checked out the, um, the gospel reading or the householder, the Rastafari householder reading or the gospel reading, which is Matthew chapter 21 verses 33 to 46, please do. This is the second part right here from 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to verse 18. Now, the context of this goes, doves tail beautifully with um, the Torah portion. Now, the Bible says this. It says that it says that those who read in the reading of Moses, right? In the reading of Moses, there is a veil, right? There's a veil that's over their eyes in the reading of Moses. What does that mean? Well, first of all, let's get the scripture. Let's get the scripture for that part right there. There's a veil. Now, how it spells veil, if you're looking at the King James Version, I think it's V-A-I-L in King James Version, V-A-I-L. Let me just um, go over that and see if I am correct with uh, that. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. And this is from 2 Corinthians, same book, a couple of chapters before. We find in chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13, and it reads, and not as Moses, Musa, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel, let me show you this right here, that the children of Israel could not steadily or steadfastly look on the end of that which is abolished. So Moses put a veil right, over his face, right? And, but it says here, but their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, in the Torah portion readings that they even read to this day. There's still a veil over their minds, right? Over their minds were blinded. So there's a veil and that veil is untaken away in the reading of the Belui Kidan of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So we see in 2 Corinthians 3, 14, that that veil, right, is done away, right, is removed in Christ. Uh, verse 15, but even to this day, say this day, this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. So it's already known that in the true church, right? Salvation is of the line of the tribe of Judah or the Jews, that Moses is read. But when they read Moses, there's a veil upon their heart. There's a veil upon their consciousness, right? Their, their, their consciousness. Verse 16, nevertheless, when it shall turn, their hearts turn to Adonai, Adonai, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the veil shall be taken away, right? That veil shall be taken away. So we want to just point that out about the veil, the teaching about the veil, right? And the veil being over their eyes. This is one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit reminded me I, and I tried it. I, I did it. And then when I saw the spiritual fruitfulness and the benefit, 
I recommend that and share it with the I them to read the New Testament reading, right, before the reading of the Old Testament reading, just to gain a better groundation and a better a better foundation. Let's see if we can bring this up right here. Where is where's the window right here? Let's see. The Sabbath house readings. Uh, let's see if we can bring this up. Okay, it's not coming up right here. Let's see if we can reopen this. All right. Okay, for whatever reason, program is acting defectively. So we'll just close that up for right now. But what I want to show you, actually, I can just move this. Let there be some light on it. And then you can see that right there. This is a part of the Sabbath house reading, number 33, right there. Leviticus, Jeremiah, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18. All right? So let us touch on that right, right here, right now. All right? Okay, so here we go. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6 which speaks on separation being ye separate coming out of Babylon and cleansing right on separation and cleansing something else I wanted to show you too right where it says um, what Christ says to them and to us he says uh, observe what they observe but don't do after their works so observe this right here. This is this is uh, from the Jesuits, right? I call this. Let's bring up the title right there. Um, Jesuit um, metaphysics: the chakra and the cross. That's what you're seeing on the right hand side right there of Christ on the cross. How it relates to the tree of life. You see, this is when Christ said that that. Um, that they have the keys of heaven, the husbandmen, the religious authorities, whether in Judaism or Christianity, right? They have the keys, right, of the kingdom, the keys of heaven, but they don't enter in and they prevent others who are seeking to enter in from entering in, right? They have the keys. He rebuked them saying that they had the keys, but they didn't enter in, and those who sought to enter in, right, they prevented those who sought to enter in. So when we're speaking about Kabbalah, that Christ taught the real, the true Kabbalah, right, they, they you know, they basically lie and say, no, it's not about Gnostic. Then you recognize that the word Gnostic is Gnosis, is knowledge, and how important it is to Gnosis, right, to have a Gnostic, to be a Gnostic of the truth. Right. Without it. Right. No man can see God. And this is why they do not see God in his divinity, in his racial or his spiritual and spirit or in truth. But here, starting from verse 11 and reading to verse 18, so we can put it into his context, is an appeal to separation and cleansing, an appeal to separating. Right. And cleansing. Right. And, and, and cleansing. Now, the cleansing comes through the word. The cleansing comes through the word because it is all mental. Right. It's concerning the mind when it says their minds were blinded. Right. Their minds were blinded. Ye shall know the truth and the truth that, you know. Shall set you free. The truth that you don't know basically doesn't do anything for you because you do not have it in your heart and your mind. So it's not on board. You haven't downloaded it, in other words. O ye Corinthians, we could say, O ye Christians, O ye, o ye so-called Jews, but O ye religious folks. But here it's saying, O ye Corinthians, O ye Corinthians, our mouth is opened to you. Our heart is enlarged. So his mouth being open to them, his heart, right? His heart 
being enlarged, right? His heart being enlarged. Let's see if we can zoom this in right here. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open, the opening of the mouth, right? Our heart is 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 enlarged. It's is is it's like the wings are expand, expansion, right? Um being greater in spirit, his majesty says, ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. In other words, it's not us causing the problem here. You understand? It's ones that don't want to receive it in their own bowels, in their own belly, right? Where some say that the, that the soul or the spirit is found in the, in the belly, right? In that particular chakra so to speak, right? Now, for a recompense in the same, I speak as to my children. Be ye also enlarged, his majesty, to be greater in spirit, right? To be greater in spirit. Let us be greater in spirit and in our true outlook and how we look upon the world. But the key is the repentance, the metanoia, the changing of your mind to not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't be unequally yoked, right? Unequally yoked. And we have to explain what that meaning of yoke is, right? A yoke fellow. What, what, what is the yoke? Christ says to us, let's go to Matthew so you can understand the link with the the, the the idea of yoke, right? The idea of yoke. He speaks to us concerning concerning his yoke, right? Of his yoke, because ones might think we're talking about maybe eggs or something like that. We're not speaking about so-called eggs. We're not speaking about egg yolk, right? We're not speaking about egg yolk in that context. What we're speaking about is what Christ says about take my yoke, when he says take my yoke, right? Take that discipline, right? Take my discipline upon you, right? Take my discipline upon you. Learn of me. Come to, come to me, he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let me bring this up right here so you can so you can see this for yourself. So that's the that's the context, right? That's the context of yoke, right? The context of yoke is based on the words of Adonai, is based on the words of the master, and it's used in a couple of at Matthew 11, you can see this right here, Matthew 11 and 29. Take my yoke upon you, my yoke, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, right? To hoot, right? And ye shall find rest, right? Shabbat rest for your soul. Then in the next verse, he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, as we move this forward, we find this New Testament reading for ourselves. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Right? Now, that, that does not mean that we are not in the world. That basically means that we are not of the world, right? We are not of the world. And what concord have Christos with Belial or Belia or Blair or the Prince of Belair, right? Or what part have he that amains or believeth that amenes with an infidel with a kahadi, right? Or one who kahades, one who denies. And what agreement hath the temple of Jah, the temple of God, of Elohim, with idols? 
For ye are the temple of the living God. As God Elohim have said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, their Elohim, and they shall be my people. We find this also in Revelation, right? We find this also spoken to us, right, in Revelation. And Revelation, as as Burhana Salasi, as Bob Mali said, Revelation reveals, right, reveals the truth. Let's bring this over here, right, in Revelation. Okay, here we go. All right, in Revelation. Now, um, verse 17. Wherefore, right, because of that which has gone before, wherefore, come out from among them. But how do we come out from among them? Most people say, yeah, we need to just pack up and go. Yeah, but if you have not come out in spirit and in your soul, your psychology, in body, it's like the Israelites. They were in body out of Egypt, but in their spirit and their soul, they were still in the house of bondage, of religious bondage, right? They were still in bondage to the beggarly elements, the beggarly elements of the world. Wherefore, come out from among them, come out from their mindset, from their way of thinking, right? Be, be uh, born again, right? In the spirit of your heart and your mind and be ye separate, right? That's the root of being holy, of caduce, is the way that you think, your mind state. Saith Adonai, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Now this is interesting because in the physical, in the carnal, we'll say, okay, touch not, physically touch. But hasn't things touched you? You say, oh, that's so touching. You know, like sometimes I watch the news now, you hear about some of this madness that's going on and sometimes you'd be like, oh, oh, I feel so sorry. Oh, I feel so sad. Oh, such and such. You're being touched by it. And a lot of these things are according to the Kaal, according to the word of life, are unclean for us, right? Are unclean for us to be touched by that. You understand? So the touch both is, you know, I was watching something that was explaining the kind of scientific and metaphysics of touch, you know, like what is going on when we really touch, you know, on the, the metaphysical scientific aspect, but both it's a, we touching something and something is touching us, but something can touch us and then we would touch it. You know, sometimes you're watching these things on TV in the Babylonian world, like they had this whole big thing for the 9-11 saying it's a sacred, it's holy, and we want to make sure nobody forgets this. It's holy to which God? To the living God or to the God of the dead, right? To the God of the world, to the blind God of the world. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon, my people, and be ye separate. Be ye at the be ye holy, saith Adonai, saith Jah Rastafari, and touch not the unclean. And I will, here's the key word, and I will Kabbalah you, I will Kabbalah you, I will receive you, I will receive you. So Kabbalah right there, receive, Kabbalah. And I and will be, and will be a what? A father, Abba, Abba to you and ye shall be my sons and daughters saith the Lord saith Yahweh El Shaddai saith the Lord Almighty so that is the key kind of connection right there because it's speaking of house now in my father's house give me I gave you the sign give me the cosign in my father's house there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. So in my father's what? My father's house. Something very interesting in the, in the metaphysical Bible dictionary. We put up the PDF 
on the resources. So please download it, get you know, check it out if you want to read this. Well, I'm about to read right here for yourself, and you should read it for yourself. House here, house here refers to Yahweh's house, or it says Jehovah's. Jehovah's house, right? Jehovah's house. Metaphysically, when we deal with the word house or bait, as we have Bethel in the scripture or Bethel, Dutel, Bethel, right? Bethel in the scriptures, metaphysically, right? House is the body. Quote, we are a temple of the living God. We are a Mechdes. Now, if you compare that with this Torah reading and the eyes being opened up or last week's Torah reading, which ended at Leviticus 26 and 2, it says to reverence, right, reverence my sanctuary, right, reverence my holy place, reverence, it says ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary, Ani Yahweh, I am he who be who he be. His divine majesty says to us, ye shall, we shall keep, right, his Sabbaths, right? Now, remember the word keep. Remember the, the key of the word keep. Let's bring this up here so you can see how to use these companion, these companion tools right here. This is uh, Leviticus 26 and 3. Then we scroll back right here and we have Leviticus uh, 26 and 2, ye shall keep. What is the word keep? It's that Shema word, that Shema to hedge about as with thorns. So the Shabbat is like our rose, right? Where we rise, right? And we are to keep it, to protect it with thorns, right? As with thorns. And you can see it right here. Zoom in on that right there, right? protected as with thorns, right? I.e. in S to guard. Second meaning generally to protect, to attend to, right? To attend to, etc. It's a primitive root, shamar, right? The word shamar, B word or B word. King James says, be circumspect, take heed to self, to keep keeper, keep self, to mark, to look narrowly, right? To look narrowly, not broadly at what everybody does on Saturday, doesn't matter to us, but what we are to do and what the Shabbat does for us in Christ, observe, to preserve, to regard, to reserve, like reserve the date, reserve this appointed part of the statutes, the Behukotai, right? Hukok means appointed, right? To reserve, to save, save self, sure, to be sure, assured, firm, right? That lay wait for, right? So we even lie wait for the Shabbat to be a watchman for the Shabbat. So that's the key connection there. Then it says reverence, right here it says reverence. What's the word reverence? The word reverence is the word yare. Yare. The word yare means to fear, right? Morally to reserve. In a moral sense to reserve. A moral theocracy as we say, right? Thirdly, causatively is to frighten, right? Is to frighten. Now people say, oh, it's not about fear. Well, we, we didn't say about fear, but we are to reverence his sanctuary, his mikdash, right? And what is the mikdash? The mikdash is a consecrated thing, a consecrated place in grace, especially a palace, a sanctuary, whether now, there's two ways of looking at this, whether of Yahweh in truth or of idols in, in, in folly, right? Is a, is a mikdash. It's like when they have their sports on the Sunday or the Saturdays, that becomes a holy place for those who are in the God of the world. Or an asylum, right? So for us, the Shabbat is a sane, a sane asylum. Those who do the things of the world, flesh and devil, that's insanity, right? Now, what's interesting, if you look at the King James down here, it says chapel, 
right? It says chapel. Let's just bring this up a little bit larger right here. Let's see if we can bring this up for the sanctuary right here. Bring this down so you can see this a little bit larger. Here we go, right? Mikdash. We say Mekdes. They say Mikdash, right? But Mekdes is no doubt more correct because it's more consistent, right? They just pick this up and try to put it together, right? Like Legos, Lego of our ego, right? But anyway, Mikdash, right? Mikdosh, right? Mikdash, Exodus 15, a consecrated thing. So for us, it's in terms of what Exodus, right, speaks of, right? Exodus, the movement of Jah people. Now you see the word chapel. Notice how this word chapel is right here. We say Selassie is the chapel. Notice chapel right there. A hallowed part, right? A holy place, a sanctuary. So in King James, you might find it translated as either or of these. Some places would be a chapel, some place a holy place, some place a sanctuary, some place a hollow place. But behind all of that is the idea of the Mekdes or the Mikdosh, the Mikdosh, right? Or the holy place. Now, how does this, right? How does this connect, right? With the Sabbath? How does this connect with this Torah portion reading? Well, quite easily. Let's go on with the metaphysical Bible dictionary right here. Under house, right? So you can download the PDF, look it up under house. It says Jehovah's, Yahweh's house, right? Micah 4 and 1 is uh, one of the references. Then it says metaphysically the body. We are the temple, the Mikdash, right? The Mekdes of the living, of the living God, of the living Elohim. Now, when we go outside and, 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 and deal with the idols of the world, the flesh, and the devil, going outside of ourselves, the outer court, right? The outer court is their temple of the dead God or the God of the world, flesh and devil. Second Corinthians 6 and 16 proves that we are the temple or the body, right? We as the collective body, as the corporate body or the church, and each of our indivisible dual, individual bodies, right, is our, is, is the temple, right, or the tabernacle, the holy place of the living Ja Rastafari. The mountains are the higher brain centers. So in scriptures, we find words like mountains. Mountains represent the higher, right, the higher brain, right, what they call the higher brain, not the reptilian, is the lower, like the valley, the reptilian cortex, but we're speaking about the higher brain centers. And the top of the mountain is the spiritual brain in the very apex of the cranium, right? Notice where Christ was crucified, right? Christ was crucified in the place, at the place of the skull, right? At the place of the skull. Be ye not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, whose skull is that? They haven't explained I say it's Jezebel's skull and her bones. That was the only thing left of her when the chariot and the dogs let loose on her, right? Which is a symbol of this Babylon to come as well. But our victory is already assured in him and through him. When men cultivate spiritual thoughts, as we are to cultivate spiritual thoughts, especially during the Shabbat time, during those appointed times, right? Those hukok times. This top brain is exalted. The top brain now is exalted above the hills. The hills are like 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 fake mountains or mini mountains, right? So it's exalted. The top brain is exalted. And we're referring to the pineal cortex as well. You know, in the more modern scientific understanding and the whole or entire the holistic consciousness or the so-called peoples, quote, end quote, the peoples. Later, it's also used of the peoples, the sea, the sea, which is an element of water. Remember Christ getting into the boat 
right? And teaching them from ship to shore, right? And how the whole connection has to do with the waters, the water of life, right? And how the blue of the water and the blue of the heavens, the water above and the water and the water below. So the peoples shall flow to it. When this spiritual center is quickened, that means made to living, when it's made alive, when it's quickened. And how is it made alive? It's made alive by its coming out from the world and its separation to the living God and to his word and his spirit, his word of truth, so that his word transforms your consciousness, your perspective, the way you look at the reality, both within the innermost of the innocence and that which is in the outer court or outside, right? When this spiritual center is quickened, it sends out a far-reaching thought energy. So sometimes we say, wow, I picked up on the eye. Yeah, I was thinking about the eye. And you just call, we pick up on that spiritual, right? We pick up on that thought energy, right? That far-reaching thought energy or as... uh Sister C, Sister Crystal says, John Network, right? Um, when this spiritual center is quickened, it sends out a far-reaching thought energy. And the whole race, not races, but the true seed, right? Race equals seed, right? The whole race consciousness, the Zera Ya'ikob, the race consciousness, the seed consciousness, the Christ consciousness is lifted up. This is represented as many nations going, quote, up to the mountain of Yahweh, going up to the mount of Jehovah, end quote. Now, the house that God builds, let me say, I will build my house, right? I will, he will build his church, not the church that they built, but the house that Jah builds and dwells in is man's body, the house that Jah builds and dwells in and abides in and madirs in and chedars in, right? And, and hatarin, right? Hatarin, in other words, right? Hida, chida, chida, madir, maderia, right? Or the true Hathor type, but I don't want to go there before explaining the true type because there's the divine duality. There's Christ and there's Antichrist, right? There is the true house of the Harui and there is the Antitype, right? Know ye not that your body is the Mekdash, the Mikdash of the Holy Spirit, right? Of the Ruach HaKodesh. Don't you know that question? First Corinthians 6 and 19, we worship Jah in the body temple, right? They say the body politic, but the body spiritual, right? In the body temple by serving him, quote, day and night in his temple, day and night, where it says in, in, Prover, uh, in, 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 in Psalm 1, right? In Psalm 1, it says this. Let's just go to Psalm 1. Come to Psalm 1 with me, right? Hold that page right there and let's go to Psalm 1. Psalm 1 explains this so beautifully. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, the true light, his joy, Right, is in the law, the Torah, the Orit, the living Torah, Christ, right, of Yahweh, right, in the living, right, the living Torah, the living Torah is Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Christ who is the spirit, right, of Yahweh, of the Father. And in his law, right, in the Father's living law, in Christ, doth he, doth we, meditate day and night. Now, the next verse here is interesting because verse three, if you completely study the Sabbath, the Torah portions, if you go to Jeremiah chapter 16, 19 to 17 and 14, 
let's just scroll there for a moment. Let's first read, read verse three, where it says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his seasons. It's really supposed to be her fruit in her season, right? And actually her leaf, right, does not wither and whatsoever he doeth, right, shall prosper. In other words, he shall be like her, that wisdom of God, right, that Christ was made wisdom for us. So there is an interesting um, gender, electromagnetic or male-female dynamic, not speaking of the gender, right, that's the physical genital gender, but the spiritual energetic gender of this, so that we can see the true agenda of God and why there's so much gender bending in this world, because the word, right, the word has been turned upside down, and our call is to open our mouths and proclaim it right side up. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 16, right? And in chapter 16, I was reading this, going over chapter 16 from verse uh, verse uh, 19, right? Verse 19 to 17, right? 17 and 14. And I came across something that was very, very interesting. It's actually right here because there's, there's a blessing. Blessed be all those who trust, right, who trust in, in Jah and curses the man who trusts in the arm of the flesh, in fleshy man. Here it says, blessed is the man that trusteth in, that our means, that leans upon supports in he who be who he be, Yahweh, in Jah. Rastafari, and whose hope, whose expectation, he who be who he be, Yahweh, right, is. Verse 8, um, 17 and 8 of Jeremiah, which is part of the Haftarah reading for this 33rd Sabbath, it says, For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, the river of life, and shall not see when heat cometh because his tabernacle, his shade is spread over her, right? Because they are married, the marriage of the lamb, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Now, how that connects with the sabbatical year is very interesting as well. But then it goes on to talk about the heart. It says the heart is deceitful above all things. Those who trust their own heart, right? And desperately wicked, who can know it? Well, it's his spirit. His spirit searcheth out the heart and the reins. He tells us right here that it's his spirit that searcheth out the heart and the reins. So receiving his spirit, right, into your temple, he will search out, the Holy Spirit will search out the heart and the reins and show you that which you have to, which you have to trash, which you have to let go, right? For, for Jah's sake. And so seeing this, this comparison right here is, is very interesting, right? This comparison right here is very interesting between Jeremiah chapter 17 and eight and Psalm one and one and three is also a very interesting comparison and um, a very interesting study. In fact, Jeremiah explains it the right way, right? That the translators have translated um, the wrong way. But the house that John builds and dwells in is man's body, right? Know ye not? In other words, we are to know that our body our five cycle or physical body is the Mekdes of the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Kedus, the Ruach HaKodesh. We worship Jah in the body temple by serving him day and night in his temple, by meditating on his word, keeping his word in our consciousness, having his word as our mantra, as the protection of our mind state, and not to not to um, go out, go
go outside of his consciousness and adopt the ways of the world that in no way reflects or projects his truth. And he that sitteth on the throne shall spread his tabernacle over them. I thought this was interesting as well. It says, he that sitteth on the throne, right, shall spread his tabernacle, right, shall spread his tabernacle over them. Revelation 7, 15. The fruits, remember the householder in Matthew 21, the fruits, right? The husbandmen were to produce fruit in the vineyard, right? And when he sent his servant, they, they were fruitless. So they killed the true prophets and the righteous men and women, men, men and women, sons and daughters who came to them, right? The fruits now, the true fruits of the true service shall be what? Revelation 7, 16 and 17 explains, it says, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun, right, the solar, the solar, right, the sun strike upon them, nor any heat, right, for the lamb, right, the lamb of God, the lamb of Abba, is Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the lamb that is in the midst of the throne. Isn't that interesting? The lamb that's in the midst of the throne because the lamb is in the heart of the King of Kings. The lamb, Jesus Christos, is in the heart of his majesty, of his divine majesty. The lamb that is in the midst of the throne shall be their shepherd. How interesting these verbs.